but uh, how to live with self and also within the society so that we can help others also because uh, as an identity i is not something we can exist independently so this is what uh, uhv has taught me and uh, definitely i would like to explore much more with this uhv so for me if anybody ask why to do uhv means it is not for a, it is for a purpose because we want to know who i am that is what i can say that about uhv bhaiya thank you one or two more sharing from anyone sharing or question uh, particularly from the homework that was given last week last sunday bhai i would like to share uh, one point ji hmm. yeah. namaste to all so um, in this journey uh, after completing one year and almost coming to two years i am uh, i am able to know about myself that is what i am thinking at i am i am seeing what kind of a person i am initially i would be i wouldn't see myself so clearly so that is a, that is some uh, that's a joy that i am feeling and i feel so empowered that because i'm able to see then i can only correct myself so this is one very big benefit that i am finding any observation from the uh, assignment or homework that was shared last week जी जी सर नमस्ते सर नमस्ते गणेश सर सभी को नमस्ते दिस फेस टू फेस व्हाट्सअप इज व्हाट माय एक्सपीरियंस इज मोर इजी टू कनेक्ट द कंटेंट्स एंड द लाइव सेशंस आर वेरी लाइक कनेक्टिंग द द द द कंटेंट्स विद द लिविंग ऑफ दिस रिसोर्स पर्सन एंड ऑल इन वन आई कैन से दैट इट इज there is a lot of uh, changes uh, during this workshop i have experienced that not only uh, with me also i uh, see the lot of changes with the, uh, which is observed with other participants also uh, so the more explorations is uh, the part of the subtle things so in uh, uh, so rather going uh, through the gross part so this is a very important uh, particularly the face to face workshop is uh, really uh, has a Uh, deeper explorations and uh, it is really effective uh, on my part uh, what i have experienced so uh, regarding the last uh, week observations this is also whatever it was good, good, nice session by umar sambhu sir so so objective is uh, how can i develop myself uh, for my growth so that i can contribute for my uh, like students or uh, family society this is the objective so uh, big part of this i i am really grateful for this uh, platform thank you namaste hello am i audible sir ji bhaiya ji ji namaste so how many of us are going to be in the resource team who are going for uh, these 10 ftps is that he is going ravindra raut are, are, are you going for the as a resource person or as part of the resource team okay two people p four 
sir uh, I, i am uh, uh, as a observer in this uh, uh, yeah, yeah. three days test not, yeah, not yeah. No, usb2 sir uh, just i am uh, as a role of uh, help desk in this uh, 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 this uh, 10 uh, ict workshop sir but i am for uh, i have been working uh, as a co facilitator and observing three days uh, fdp sir ji sir namaste okay so all all the uh, people who are go going as resource persons or as observers the co facilitators that is all those who are part of the resource team this uh, workshop is specially for them and for everybody else also it will be helpful in preparing ourselves and uh, there was some homework that was given before the first Uh, episode and also before the second one and also now before this one so same homework was given so i hope that uh, we have uh, attempted to do the homework and that it was useful so if anybody would like to share uh, their takeaways from the homework or from what they went through in previous workshops Uh, that is what was being i think and to that is what you were asking for ji bhaiya ji okay all right so now we have five people who are part of the team going for these 10 uh, uhb2 ftps but uh, total what is the total jitendra uh, total number Uh, uh, rp and co facilitator rp co facilitator and observer hmm i think bhaiya wo uh, 26 hai 25 26 okay, okay. so i hope most of uh, that uh, group is here uh, yes yes bhaiya many <laughs> many <laughs> have not uh, raised their hand so they can raise their hand many are present okay that's nice that everybody is present i mean whoever is not present maybe we can share the recording with them but let's uh, do the sharing part and um any um any take away from the homework and then we can proceed so nice we have most of us are here then. okay Okay. Yeah, so there was some sharing going on, so we can continue with that. G. So, can we have? Uh... one more sharing or question from the last two discussions ji nidhi didi ji namaste bhaiya namaste sabhi ko sir isme ek question tha how will you inspire the host institute uh, isme mujhe thoda dikkat ho jata hai uh, main jitni bhi workshops mein gayi wahan ऐसे हुआ कि उमेश सर हो या अनीता दीदी थे फिर ऐसे बड़े पोस्ट और एज ऐसे सभी लोग प्रेजेंट थे वहां वहां पर थोड़ा आसान हो गया मेरे लिए क्योंकि सिर्फ वर्कशॉप के कंटेंट रखने का पार्ट थोड़ा बहुत ठीक ठीक हुआ लेकिन जब भी ऐसे इंस्टीट्यूट के मैनेजमेंट से या ऑथोरिटी से बात करने की बात हो तो वो उतना मैं ठीक से नहीं कर पाती थी मुझे हमेशा ही लगता था कि आ, एक तो मेरा अपना भी इवेल्युएशन मैं ठीक से नहीं कर पाती थी और उस पोस्ट और एज से मैं काफी प्रभावित हो जाती हूँ 
तो इसके लिए मुझे क्या प्रिपरेशन करना चाहिए जी सर रिस्पॉन्ड करेंगे इस पे आप जी ठीक ये जो हमारा जो मान्यता है ना संस्कार उसके तहत हमने बहुत सारे डिफ्रेंसिएशन बना रखे और जो जो डिफ्रेंसिएशन बनाए हैं वो सब हमको कहीं ना कहीं प्रभावित करते हैं तो अगर हमको लगता है कि somebody who is on a higher post is higher than me and I am not able to see them or him as a human being like me, but I am seeing the other as a post. And I already have a precondition regarding that post. So when I see the other as post, and I <coughs> find that I am at a lower post, then I generally lose my confidence. That is the problem. So if I can see him as a human being, him or her as a human being, <coughs> and also see that he is carrying out certain specific responsibility, and if I can see myself also as a human being, and carrying some other set of responsibility, then I think this loss of confidence will not be there. So I can talk to him or her as a human being, share my ideas, and would, you know, let him respond to it. Let him respond to it. And if his response is not up to my expectation, then again, I should not get disturbed. If I am getting disturbed, then again, I am not, uh, not in my natural state of being. So that's another place where I have to be, you know, aware. So next time when I'm interacting, I must notice these two things. Number one, am I able to see him as a human being as well, apart from the responsibility that he is discharging? Number two, am I, you know, very strongly influenced by my success? or lack of success. So if I take it as a responsibility of a human being to share whatever I have understood and what I think is going to be meaningful for the other. So I'll do that, whether the other person is responding or not responding whether he is very, you know, uh, enthusiastic by it or not at all moved by it. So if two things are taken care, I think, you know, I can share my ideas, my proposals with the other without getting upset. The first thing to fix is this. Am I able to see myself as a human being and the other as a human being? And then out of my concern for the other as a human being, I'm sharing my this, you know, ideas 
as a responsibility, as a sense of responsibility with the other. <clears throat> and I am not disturbed or upset by the response or the reaction that the other is giving. If there is a reaction, I only understand that I am not able to communicate. So I have to work hard, try, you know, make more effort to understand the other, understand the content, share it with the other, and all that. So that responsibility is there without getting upset. Yeah, I think these two things are quite important. Ji, sir. Now I am able to place it well in me. I will see to it accordingly. Thank you so much. Yeah. In fact, if you are comfortable, no, the other person also gets comfortable. If you are uncomfortable and tense, the other person becomes uncomfortable. True, sir. Yes. Yeah. Your, your voice, your voice is not very audible. Something to say. And Satyaranjan. Your voice was not very audible, Jitendi. Namaste, Bhaiya. Maybe Bhaiya was saying that uh, Satyaranjan Bhaiya's hand is raised. Do you want to convey anything? Is what Bhaiya wanted to convey, I think. Namaste, Bhaiya. Satyaranjan Bhaiya. Aprajita Didi, your hand is raised. You want to convey something, Didi? No, Didi, I would just lower it. Okay, but... okay, okay, Didi. Thank you, Didi. I think, uh, am I audible now? Yes, Pai. Yes. G, G, G. So if uh, anyone has uh, any query uh, or question uh, from last week's discussion, if you reflected upon the homework given, then uh, you may share. I think if we uh, interact and uh, share uh, what uh, we are feeling and uh, uh, what we are contemplating upon, uh, then the discussion will be more uh, uh, fruitful and everybody will be able to get more out of this discussion. Uh, ji, Dr. Swayam Sadpati Ji. Ji. Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste. Namaste Thank you so much. And, uh, namaste, Sabiko. Namaste, Ganesh, Bhaiya. Namaste, Kumar, Bhaiya. So actually, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, I was just asking what is the prerequisite uh, to be as a RP or a co-facilitator? Yeah, Jitendra, you can respond. <clears throat> Ji, uh, Ji. So Didi, uh, there's this long uh, process, I would say, uh, not long, but a regress process. If... Uh, 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 we are able to uh, feel the need, uh, first of all, uh, uh, that uh, we want to share this uh, content uh, to the next generation, to our fellow uh, human beings. And we have uh, now, uh, we have uh, started uh, uh, our uh, process of self-exploration, like uh, uh, 
we have started uh, observing the uh, reality out there and uh, the various proposals uh, shared uh, through the workshop and uh, uh, if we uh, gradually are become are becoming confident about uh, the clarity uh, of the proposals shared as well as we are able to experiment or uh, validate the proposals which we uh, are understanding we are if we are able to validate these proposals into our living uh, and uh, then gradually uh, we can uh, start uh, preparing for sharing this content uh, further uh, to the students and to our fellow teachers uh, we can start with uh, preparing for one session and gradually as we go along and our competence our competence increases then gradually we can uh, start sharing it in the complete uh, uh, format of the workshop Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Bia. Actually, I, I, I felt as if there are some other, uh, these all, of course, I know because, uh, you know, I've been associated to this uh, uh, UHP for since long and I have been teaching uh, students and as well as wherever I find, uh, you know, things to be shared and uh, talked about, I do analyze and I have, I do live with this concept. So, okay, okay. Actually, uh, actually, I joined this uh, meeting. So I was just thinking that is it, uh, I mean, am I a, uh, eligible to join this meeting or should i leave so it was just no, like that you can be you, know? you can be a part of this meeting didi certainly you can be a part of this meeting okay thank you so after much after this meeting we can also discuss uh, uh, and uh, uh, we can share the detail with you uh, as to how to go about preparing and then sharing this content absolutely absolutely no yeah. uh, that's true uh, thank you so much thanks a lot Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Geeta Didi, you want to share something? Uh, bhaiya, namaste, bhaiya. Can I share my self-exploration or observation now, Ji. bhaiya? Ji. Thank you, bhaiya. Uh, namaste, Ganesh Ji. Tadito, namaste. Uh, recently, my son got married. Previously, during these long two decades, myself and my husband were having totally different opinions, different likes and dislikes. So life was going as a struggle. And myself and my son were going together. But when his marriage got fixed, for the past two to three months, I could see that he started to express his own opinions, which were just opposite to mine. So I was started to develop a feeling of opposition towards my son also. But at one point it struck me that this was the same old pattern which I started to develop against my husband when his opinions were totally different from mine. So gradually the difference of opinion, I was concentrating only on the difference of opinion. We were both not able to be compatible in our thoughts and thought process. Over a period of time that has developed as a feeling of opposition and my life was going as a struggle. And the same pattern I could see with my son also. When he started to have his own opinions, his own likes and dislikes, I could see that I am starting to develop the feeling of opposition towards my own son also. But as I am associated with the UHV for the past three years, one day it struck me that the same pattern is arising towards my son also. And particularly UHV 3 has helped me if I continue to accumulate that feeling of opposition towards my son, yes, again my life is going to be miserable. 
slowly i started to explore myself deeply and i was able to correct myself and i was able to understand that i was fo- focusing on that opinions likes the differentiation part of the other person which is the source for developing my own feeling of appreciation that also i was able to explore within myself soon i was able to correct that soon i was able to fix it had i not been exposed to uhv definitely i would have developed hatred enmity towards my son also so over all these years i was focusing only on the differentiation part that likes opinions that is why i was not able to get along with my husband only because of incompatibility in our thoughts so all this i am able to explore within myself able to fix it my son got happily married of his own choice i am also happy myself my spouse both are happy and the young couple are also happy but at times the difference of opinion among others slowly pops up but that but that reminds me the but that draws my attention that i have to focus only on the self not on the differentiation part of opinion so it has made a big difference in my life bhaiya i would have lost my son also if i had not exposed to uhc so this i wanted to share with ganesh bhaiya so i thought i would make use of this platform to show that how self exploration has helped me to live a happy married life with my husband and also with my son and my daughter in law thank you so much for all this exploration for all this yes. knowledge thank you so much that's it from my side very nice very nice geeta ji you have been working very hard with yourself i think it must be more than 2 years now you have been attending the morning session right 3 years approximately 3 years bhaiya from jan 2021 jan yeah. 2 2021 i am attending regularly bhaiya yeah yes very nice is it my sanskar bhaiya that i am focusing on the opinion or on the uh, focusing on the opinion i am not able to see beyond that opinion opinion yeah. of the other people yes yes yeah <clears throat> see so many things have just you know come and sitting in our sanskar <clears throat> and depending on the sanskar we give importance to things so if we are not able to do our own self evaluation mm. then the opinion of the other becomes more important than they are really mm. the other impo- in- opinion is important because it conveys to me about my condition as well as the condition of the other mm. 
but I must take that opinion as some input to work on myself rather than getting influenced by it. Oh, oh. So I take the opinion of the other. On oh. the basis of that, I make some judgment about myself, about the other. And then on the basis of that, I decide what to do oh, oh. myself further or to help the other to improve. So opinion is important. Oh, oh. But opinion should not overpower me. Oh. It should rather help me to improve further. Oh, oh. Yes. Once again, thank you so much. Bye to all. Yes. Isha Didi, you want to say something? Yes, but uh, actually to the, like, I don't know whether I'm in the right this thing. When we are saying how to inspire the host institute to take UHV2 as credit course, uh, with respect to it, uh, we can say like uh, students will have the more clarity of thought. So thereby they'll be more employable because uh, if we, they are exposed to UHV2, they know about how to uh, develop themselves and work in a society and all. So they realize about team building and teamwork. This is first strategy I think uh, can be said with respect to the credit course if it is added up as. And second thing, from the management perspective of it, why this can be a credit course also is if we go with the NAC accreditation point of view, in the NAC uh, with respect to criteria seven, uh, the human values and ethics, it is covered a lot. And if we talk about NBA with respect to the program outcomes mapping, if it is introduced as a credit course, most of the courses are with the technical skills. But this is something which is required for the development and uh, for meeting the program outcomes also. So this is, can we uh, say this as something inputs to inspire the host institute to take up as a credit course? This is my homework that I'm talking about. So I would like to take that opinion, Bhaiya. Thank you. I hope I'm clear in conveying my message. Yeah, Jitendi, you are responding? Yes, yes, sir. If you want to do it, it will be good. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you You can respond. Achha. Well, I can respond if you want me to respond. Please, sir, you respond. Karenge to. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is a valid point that uh, you have uh, placed that if students go through this, they have a better understanding of human relationship. And therefore, they are good at teamwork. So along with the technical knowledge that they are getting, if they understand relationship and if they are good at teamwork then in the industry today there is a you know greater demand for them greater you know need for them and this experience of triple it hyderabad has been that this session we started in 2005 and 2009 onward that was probably the first batch which came with this course the response of the industry has been very significant. And so much so that in 2012, there was a, a survey and uh, this data request they came up with this, that the 
the salary package that students of triple it has been getting has been one of the highest in the country and when the director asked these people from the industry as to why they prefer their people they said you know the technical knowledge is okay you know and if there is some lack of it we can fulfill that ourselves but teamwork which is a very significant thing you know that is difficult to teach during our training period and we find that your students are very good at teamwork so that is true that uh, if students go through this it will uh, very beneficial for them in terms of getting a better you know job better career opportunity but along with that somebody has responded saying that it is life living technique technical subject about how to live the life so this is important that you know we learn how to live life more meaningfully within ourselves in our relationship in the family our relationship with people in the workplace so this is another major you know kind of benefit and one significant thing which they can observe is the teach is that the teachers who go through these workshops and are teaching uh, these courses there is a significant shift in their perception and their relationship with their co colleagues in the institution even their you know uh, kind of uh, sincerity towards academics both that of the teacher and of the student goes significantly high once they are in this process so this is another important thing and this chance of the teacher shifting from one college to the other because of some additional financial benefit this becomes less because they feel more responsible towards the teaching towards the students towards their colleagues and therefore they feel that it is better you know to be in relationship with all around rather than shifting from one place to the other for you know gain of a small amount of money so all these advantages are there which you can discuss but what you mentioned is a good uh, kind of thing which makes a lot of difference for these colleges yes thank you pay for the response thank you yeah in fact there is you know uh, out of the uh, many feedback that we have taken you know number of uh, these changes have been seen so we can certainly make mention of those if there is time and if there is a comfortable discussion going on then we can mention many of them and it is also a good idea that if there is some teacher there from the same institute and who is sincerely working on himself if we can ask him to share his experience then it will be uh, more uh, authentic and appealing Yeah. So, uh, sir. Uh, so can we go to the next uh, uh, slides of sh sharing content sharing? Yes. Yes. G. G. So, slides number nineteen. We can start with. Yeah. Uh, 
जी आई थिंक भैया फ्रॉम हेयर है ना नेक्स्ट 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 दिस इज सेवेंटीन आई थिंक यू टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम एटीन इज इट नो नाइनटीन इनफैक्ट from this place yeah so the points that we have to take care while presenting right so as i said the uh, week before that fundamental things which there in existence is relationship harmony and coexistence so that has to be kept in mind all the time when you are talking about the content these three things are at the center when you are talking about the process of sharing then also this is very important you know is central thing so all these points that we are going to discuss are basically elaboration elaboration of those three things the relationship the harmony the coexistence so first point is saying connect to participants and assurance in relationship before placing deeper concepts deeper content in fact whenever i am sharing something and particularly content like uhv what is significant is my relationship with the other with whom i am sharing how comfortable the other is how assured he is feeling in my relationship with him or her so this is important that when i am sharing the content all my co you know uh, workers all my you know team members how comfortable i am with them and how how comfortable i am with the participants the most important thing in the process of education in transaction between the teacher and the student is the relationship between the teacher and the student so this we must keep in mind so two things i would say relationship within within the team members who are presenting who are conducting the session and relationship with the participant both are very important because what you are saying about you know relationship and about harmony that must reflect in within your team number 1 and in your relationship with the participants So this is one important thing. Yeah. The second thing is placing the content with a feeling of relationship, with real life examples. <clears throat> so
So this is important when we are placing any concept. As we said, it has to be placed with a feeling of relationship. If there is a feeling of relationship, the other is willing to listen. In fact, he is eager to listen. Right? He feels that you are going to say something which is going to be meaningful for, the, for him. Therefore, he is paying attention. That is one thing, you know, with relationship. The other important thing is that if this content or this concept is exemplified with a real life example, which the other person can see and relate to, then it is very helpful. It is very helpful. In fact, many times we start with sharing of the experience of the participants who have attended this session in the past. Because this is one way to come up with the examples right, of what kind of transformation is taking place in the people. So what I was saying just now that if there is somebody there already as a faculty who has gone through this and there is some meaningful transformation in the other, if he shares this, then it makes the things clear, you know, more apparent that yes, this can happen and this is happening. So this real life example is important. And what is written in the bracket is examples need to be factual and not fabricated. So, if it is a real life example, then yes, it is factual. It has happened. And now we have so many examples available. Like, if you look at the uh, feed, uh, you know, kind of feedback which comes during any of these workshops, and particularly in the morning session, now we'll have thousands of such real life examples where there is a significant transformation at the level of the individual, the self, at the level of teamwork, and at the level of their participation in the societal development. So there are enough examples, right? real life examples. So if we support or clarify our content with these real life examples, it is very helpful. So this is the second point. The third point is very important. In fact, to establish relationship and to proceed with that feeling of relationship to deliver the content, what is important is the dialogue. So if we can communicate, share our content through a process of dialogue and not monologue, then it is very effective. In fact, through the dialogue, not only that you are able to effectively communicate your point, but you are also able to establish relationship. Even for establishing relationship, this process of dialogue is very important, very helpful. In fact, many of you would have noticed that while we are sharing the content through the process of dialogue, many people who were not very expressive, who were not opening up, they start opening. And many of them become very expressive. In fact, if you look at the uh, feedback that you um, get at the end of the workshop, many of them say that they have not spoken in a stage like this in their lifetime. But now they are feeling confident because that 
environment of dialogue is created. So this is important. That we are basically trying to initiate the dialogue and continue with the dialogue in order to share the content in an effective manner and through relationship. Then another point, which is part of this third, uh, this thing, is keeping enough time to place the proposal clearly. So there is no hurry. In fact, all the presentations are designed in a manner that the main content or the key takeaway which has to be shared is not too many. So there are few important points which have to be conveyed. And there is enough time for us to convey that. Right? So keeping that content at the center, if we you know, place the proposal and proceed with the dialogue, then number one, we will be able to spend enough time to place our proposal. And at the same time, we'll be able to initiate the dialogue and continue with the dialogue, responding to the questions that are raised by the participants. And I would say that the central thing there is that feeling of relationship. So if I feel related to the other and if I'm comfortable with the other, then I can place my point, you know, my proposal in a very proper manner, you know, and then I can open it for dialogue. Okay. And if there are questions, I can respond to it you know, with that feeling of relationship and things can proceed. You know, we don't have to hurry. There is enough time. The whole you know, sessions are designed in a manner that every session is placing a few very selected, you know, proposals, points, which can be comfortably shared in one session. So this balance has to be there. Taking enough time to place the proposal and at the same time, proceed through the process of dialogue and not monologue. The fourth point is proposing the content in place of trying to convince. Note that there is a difference between a convincing response and convincing the participant. This is very important. In fact, our target in the workshop or any sharing process is not to convince the other of the point that we are making. Our idea is that a process of self-exploration must start in the other. So the major success of the workshop is if we are able to initiate the process of dialogue, initiate the process of this self-exploration in the other person. So in that sense, we are saying that our idea is to propose the content and help to initiate the process of dialogue, self-exploration in the other, rather than trying to convince. And if we do that, you will find that it is a making it is making a difference in the other. Right? When you are not pressing the other person and giving him the opportunity to listen to the proposal, look into the proposal, pass it through his process of self verification, then at least you know, to begin with, he is very comfortable with it. And then as he goes 
ahead with verifying it and he finds that yes, it is making sense to him. Then he feels convinced. So he feels convinced out of his own self-exploration and not out of your pursuance or not out of your, you know, uh, harping on it again and again. And this, once this process of self-expression has started, it will go a long way. So not only during the workshop, but even after the workshop, this process will continue. So this must be clear to all of us who have gone through the process. Then focusing more on the content than today's problems, citing examples of today helps the participant to relate to one's living, but it need not be too critical or demoralizing or depressing. So this balance is required. In, right? I have to convey certain points, certain you know, content. And this content is solution oriented, not problem oriented. So the major thrust of our presentation, our discussion should be that solution, that content that we are proposing. And in order to exemplify that, or the importance of that, we might take up some problem that we are facing today and which are because of the lack of this solution, this clarity. So that should be the, you know, uh, kind of placement of the discussion on the problem of the today. Instead of this, if we are putting too much of, you know, time on describing the problems today, it may prove to be problematic. You know, people may feel that we are trying to, you know, uh, create a condition uh, where they will be forced to accept what we are saying. And many times the whole thing gets digressed. So that is not our idea. Our idea is to convey the content, which is, is the, which is solution centric. And in order to draw the importance of this solution, we might take up some problem and discuss it just to bring to their notice the importance of what we are proposing as a solution. Uh, the next point is very important. <clears throat> Placing content sequentially, step by step, so that the participant is able to grasp the meaning clearly and not discussing beyond what has been covered or beyond the syllabus. Uh, this is important because I mean, there are two, two, two major points here. One is placing the content sequentially, step by step. This is very important. Right. So that simple principle of moving from known to unknown that we have to keep in mind that the participant or the student already has knowledge of some things and starting from what already he has the knowledge of if we can introduce stepwise right what is not known to him, then he is able to connect. Right? Then he is able to connect. For example, <clears throat> every participant can see for himself that he wants to be happy. The need for happiness is something which is inherent in him. And he can also see that he wants the need, happiness in continuity. So this is something which he already can see. 
And if I ask this question now, that you want to be happy in continuity, but are you happy in continuity? So there is a need for happiness in continuity that is clear to him. But now if you ask the other to explore and find out whether he is in a state of continuous happiness or not, he can connect and see that yes, he is not. From there, we can conclude that whatever has been his idea you know, for ensuring happiness in continuity is not working. Then we can place that maybe the very understanding of happiness, what we understand as happiness, may not be correct. So we think that happiness is getting some favorable sensation and so on and so forth. Now, in that context, we can place this definition that happiness is to be in harmony. Then he's able to relate that, yes, though it is something very different than what I thought about happiness, but it makes sense because what I thought about happiness is not working anyway. So this placement of points step by one by one, you know, so that he can relate to the reality which he already knows. Okay. Starting from there, he can step by be able to see the reality that we are trying to point out. So this is very important. In fact, majority of the presentation presentations, if you see, are designed like that. I mean, over 20 years of efforts, we have been conducting hundreds of workshops, you know, and every time we have been updating these presentations. Rajulji, I can um, uh, see that he has attended through more than 100 workshops, you know, sat through the workshop end to end, and updated the slides every time. So what you are getting is already defined, you know. So all these slides are designed in this manner that the contents are placed sequentially, step by step, so that the participant is able to grasp the meaning clearly, right? And the second point, so a lot of homework has already been done for you. You only have to understand that and make the right use of it effective use of it. And the second point that is made in this uh, is not discussing beyond what has been covered or beyond the syllabus. This is very important because again, I would say the slides, you know, these uh, presentations are so kind of terse, very tight. You know, it just Enough time is there to discuss these points. So if you are digressing from it, from the content which is intended to be placed there, and if you go beyond the syllabus, you will miss something, something which is important there. So as far as possible, we don't move out of that, you know, what is to be covered in that session then it will be easier for you to take care of the points which are to be made in that particular session. And, and you know, interesting thing is that I must be clear about these points myself. I must be clear about their importance. I must be able to relate these points in my own life. Then I will be able to help the other to see and relate to their life. So that background is even expected. The next point is be aware of issues that are sensitive while presenting topics like animal consciousness, right? gender biases, non-wage food, etc. And others that may 
initiate controversy. This is important, you know, that our idea is not to generate controversy. Our idea is to draw the attention of the other person towards a core point okay. and help him to start looking at it as a proposal and exploring it. So that is our idea. So if we are using words which may be hurting for the other or which may be something which is very sensitive for the other, then I think you know we should not unnecessarily get into those controversy or not create those controversies. For example, this animal consciousness thing. So when we say that if you are living with physical facility alone and not paying attention to right understanding and relationship, then you are living with animal consciousness. Now, many people feel very hurt about it, that we are demeaning them. So if that is the case, if somebody is raising this point, tell him, you know, that, okay, you want to call it animal consciousness? You want to call it inhuman consciousness? It is up to you. Our idea is to say that as far as animal is concerned, physical facility alone may suffice for the animal, but it will not suffice for the human being. For human being, relationship is important. Understanding is important. At least understanding is something which is so important for human being. Some people may even raise the objection that by saying animal consciousness as inferior, you are demeaning the animals. So if they are so sensitive about animal, okay, tell them to use some other word. The basic idea is this, that the human being has to live with certain things, okay, to live like a human being. And if he's missing those things, he's not in the right place. Now call him by any name. Call him by name of animal consciousness or inhuman consciousness, or whatever it is. Yeah. This non-vegetarian food, you know, interesting. I can cite you one example. When we went to Bhutan, you know, the major food in Bhutan is the meat. And they would eat meat almost every day. I remember one of the college where we went for the first workshop. The director of that college is to take meat three times a day. So there were many questions relating to this non-veg, you know, veg and non-veg eating. So when this question was asked, we responded saying that you ask yourself whether it is naturally acceptable to you to take away the body of someone by force. That's it. This is what we responded. And this director was there for that workshop. Okay. I remember. And I think four years after, there was an international conference organized uh, in uh, that college. And this director said that you know, if you can get some good cooks from Punjab who can continue here for some more time and train our uh, cooks, then we would like to switch over to the non-vegetarian food. 
and there were three people who came from Punjab and stayed over for I think 10 15 days and then trained these people and and this person introduced in one of the mess non-veg food which is quite next to impossible for the people in Bhutan but he arranged for the cooks he arranged for the you know items which were very um, tasty and appealing and he did all that and there are many other stories but I'm not going to the detail but what I'm saying is that you know this kind of issues has to be dealt with with care you know, and the choice has to be given to them to keep exploring asking themselves and let them decide yes the so, last point here avoiding the use of similes to explain the point for example software and hardware to explain self and body this is important you know uh, we do use similes and they are useful you know in fact if you look at the indian tradition one of the praman is upaman upaman is by way of exam by way of examples so you say like seed grows into a tree you know a human child grows into a you know <coughs> human being now this kind of similes in one way is very useful because you get an idea but in a way they can be hurdle also because the tree once there is enough you know nutrients available the water the environment available the tree, tree will grow but when it comes to the human being the human child will not you know automatically grow as a human being if only physical environment is provided. So physical environment is necessary, you know, favorable physical environment, but physical, you know, appropriate educational environment, you know, the favorable environment of sanskar, right kind of sanskar, right kind of education is necessary. So these similes are useful, but they may be barrier sometimes that we have to take care of. Yes. So these were the, some of the points, you know, which we have to take care. I think if there is any question on this, any of these, I can respond before going to the next slide. Uh, Ganeshi, we would not raise the points about veg and non veg kind of things from our side. Yeah. Only in response to some question we may uh, respond to it but not otherwise we are not from our side raising this yeah is that right uh you no know, that's not very clear because you know some of these issues creep up by itself because for example just gender bias mm -hmm. now when we are talking about respect and we are saying about you know not differentiating right on the basis of gender, right? Then we are in a way hinting at those issues. So the questions will come anyway. Yeah, I mean, uh, if the question does not come up, if the question about meat does not come up, then should it be raised that I can... No, meat is okay. Meat is okay. Because we are not going into those details of do's and don'ts. So we don't have to re raise that. But when we are talking about respect, this issue of gender bias will automatically come in. We are not. That is a, that yeah. is a different matter. That anyway, we are saying gender uh, when there is differentiation. Yeah. That is anyway coming up. But I'm specifically talking about meat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, see, there we are not making any very big point anyway. So why bring in the controversy unnecessarily? Exactly. So I'm saying that that we would not be from our side, we will not bring it up. Yeah. True. <clears throat> yeah. Any other question? 
or any other point. One, one more point is there that after making any specific uh, uh, important point, important proposal is given, then there should be a sufficient pause for reflection rather than going to the next point immediately. Yeah, true. Yeah, I thought that point might have been made, raised, uh, made before. The point is that when we are uh, placing the content, then we should not rush through. We take a specific point, which we consider is an important takeaway, discuss that point, expand on it, give proper examples, then let people reflect on it, let them ask question, you respond to the question, and when you think that the point is being conveyed, or at least the attention has been drawn, then you move to the next point. That is the meaning of placing the content sequentially, step by step. That is what I think, you know. So that should be done, you know, very carefully. And we should not overdo it, number one. Number two, we should not underdo it. So all significant points have to be given, you know, due time to explain, to place the proposal, you know, then helping others to start their process of dialogue. If there are questions, responding to those questions. And at the end of it, some of the points before you, going, you are going to the next point. So all these have to be done. I think if you listen to those uh, uh, recordings which are made available and which we are expecting you to go through, many of these details are being discussed there. But yes, you can mention it here also. Yes, any other point? <laughs> Or Kumarji, Kumar Sambhoji is also here. So, any point which has to be added? Okay. So, we can move to the next slide then. Yes. This Q&A. This Q&A is very important. So some of the points are made here to clarify how to you know work with these questions and answers which we have to you know uh, kind of uh, work through and they are very effective mode or means to understand the status of the audience the participant and also to respond to their queries so that the point which is being explained is placed properly and clearly. So let's look at those, those things. The first point is responding to questions from where the participant is rather than beyond their current grasp. <clears throat> so this is very important, you know. Uh, See, out of my feeling of relationship for the other, for the participant, right? I will start from where the other is. So what I was saying from known to unknown. So from what he knows and related to, I'll start from there and then try to take him to higher and higher stage of his knowledge about the point that I'm trying to make. And particularly when he's asking a question, in fact, if you have a feeling of relationship and you are paying attention, 
when somebody is asking a question, he is saying many things. Okay. Let me tell you some of them. One, he is saying about a particular reality. So he is mentioning some particular reality about which he has a question. Then when he is describing the question, he is telling about what he already knows about that reality. And third, he is also telling what he does not know about that reality. So he is talking about that reality and he is talking about himself. Right? Now, if I listen to him out of my feeling of relationship, then number one, I will be able to trace what reality is talking about. <coughs> number two, I will be able to find out what part of that reality or aspect of that reality he already knows. <coughs> And then I will also come to know what part of reality he does not know. <laughs> so if I can evaluate these three things, then my approach would be, number one, I will fix that he is talking about that particular reality. So I will place it and confirm it from him that yes, he is talking about that reality. Then I'll describe some part of that reality which he already knows. And through that, I will appeal to the other to look at the reality directly. When he is looking at the reality, then I will describe the remaining part of the reality which he does not know. And through this process, if he is able to see those aspects of the reality, then my work is done. He gets the answer himself rather than I giving the answer. And this is a very meaningful thing for him. Right? That generates a confidence in him you know, that yes, I have got the answer. So this is a very important thing. So I must be able to listen to the other out of my feeling of relationship. And if I listen to the other, these three things I will come to know. And from there, as a part of the answer, I will help him to see that he is talking about that particular reality. He already knows so much about that reality. And he has not paid attention to that remaining part. So I help him to see the reality directly and then look at those additional aspects of the reality which he has not noticed till now. And that gives him the answer. And it is his own finding. So uh, this is what it Can you take some examples of this uh, point? Yeah, for example, this, you know, uh, trying to understand the board self. Right? Well, I mean, somebody is talking about anger or somebody is saying that I understand, but it is not coming in my behavior. Or somebody is saying that I know, but the other person is the problem, not me. These are the things that they are saying. So... Can we differentiate? I mean, what is the reality they are talking about? And like with this point, can you relate it to this point?
yeah i mean i i can start from here that if somebody is asking a question like this that i have this anger you know feeling of anger and i cannot control it because it is the other person who is responsible for it right then one thing that i would you know kind of appeal to him is to see this point that we keep mentioning that what is that input which is really making you angry is it an input in terms of some word some gesture right then i'll help him to look for himself that does he get same kind of anger if the same input is given by different people if the same word is used by your friend and by your enemy do they generate same kind of anger or it is different so if you can see this that there is a difference in my anger for the same input then i can help him to see that there are two things which are playing role one is the input from the outside another is the input from your own sanskar from your own preconditioning about the other person so it is not that i cannot help it because it is coming from the other the cause is because of the other the cause is because of the other but it is also some part of it is there within me and if i can handle that part then i can take care of it yeah so what is the reality in it and what is the part of the reality that is known and what is the part that is not known all that how, how do you relate it to this point no, this is simple that part of the reality that he knows the reality is that there is an interaction of this man with the environment this is the reality now in this in reality there are three components one is the input from outside right about which he knows that there is an input from outside and therefore i get angry second is getting angry that feeling of anger that he has so he knows about this now i am drawing his attention first towards this reality of getting anger angry then i am mentioning about these first two things then i am raising this question about the third thing right that is his own preconditioning about the person who, from whom this word is coming so now he is able to see this reality in a better way or more enriched manner now this is not giving the complete answer okay but at least one more factor is now clear to him and his own contribution is you know he is able to see the next issue will be how these preconditionings are formed how did i accumulate it that will be next question and then we'll have you know we can proceed but at least one new aspect has been added in the process on the basis of what he was already in the knowledge of and you know what i am saying is that major thing is that feeling of relationship for the other concern for the other then we get the possibilities you know that we can use for helping the other
the next point is allowing the participants to open up at the same time awarding the session to be carried away by a few participants interrupting only when needed cross questioning also only to clarify the point with feeling of relationship these are very finer issues you know which we will slowly understand that you know <clears throat> not only that i have to cover certain point but i have to start that initiate that dialogue initiate that process of self expression in the other so if that feeling is there in me then i will help the participant to open up and while i am doing it i will certainly take care that in order to open up one person i am not you know delaying the session as such or get you know getting overpowered by that particular person so while i am concerned and responsible i try to open up the other but i maintain you know the sequence of the content and the time and the space that is available to us and this what is written in the bracket is very important that when i am listening to someone somebody is raising a question or making a point then i must listen must pay attention and not interrupt just like that i mean if somebody is taking too much of time yes you will try to sum up what he is trying to say but let him make his point right so interrupting only when needed and you don't cross question don't try to put him down in order to help him clarify his points better you might ask some question but it should not be like cross questioning or trying to corner the other i mean these are very fine fine points which will come up you know slowly in your mind so we are helping the other to open up right we are giving time we are listening to the other and as i said those three points will become clear about what he is asking right about the reality about his, you know what he knows about the reality and what he does not know about the reality all these will come up if you are listening to the other properly and if something is not clear you are asking question regarding the clarification clarification of that three points that i was just mentioning not trying to put him down and the next point is that when you are listening to the other you know trying to open up listen to the other i should be able to listen to the other and out of that i should be able to understand the core question that he is asking what reality he is talking about right and what aspect of reality that he is interested in knowing so this is one thing understanding the core question or the core you know point that he is trying to make rephrasing it and responding to the core question this is important he might be making to, so many statements right but that is not important ultimately he is trying to make some point and i should be able to extract that point and i should be able to place that point back saying that this is what you want to know right if i can do that half of the work is done by extracting this core concept the core content the point and rephrasing it and placing it for the other to check for himself half of the work is done right then you all that you have to do is to describe the remaining parts of the reality that he is not able to see so understanding the core question rephrasing it and responding to the core question so we are not responding to the words and sentences 
we are responding to the point that he is raising. Right? And what it means is what I have already explained that, you know, you have to help him to see the reality about which he is asking the question. He has, you have to help him to see that already he knows certain things about that reality. And then you have to draw his attention towards the remaining part of the reality which he wants to know. <coughs> the next point is important. Connecting with the potential preconditioning. Connect, it, connect to the real related basic reality and help them to explore the next step from where they are. So this is the point which I have already made. Right? That you have to help him see the reality that he is talking about. You have to help them see the preconditioning that he already has about it. Or the knowledge he has about it. Potential preconditioning. Right? And then you help them to explore that reality as a whole. Right? Start from where they are and then how to they how they can move further. So that is the right kind of answer to their question, which will help them to gain confidence in what they know, to gain confidence that they can explore further into that reality and also know for themselves what they do not know already. Uh, this is important. We have talked about this three aspects of reality. One is the tattvic, tarkic, or vaicharic, and vyavaharic. Three types of description of any reality. So we should try, if we can, if time permits, and if there is an environment, try to cover all these three aspects of reality. Tattvic description, its tarkic and vaicharic description, and its vyavaharic description. I'm using the Hindi words because uh, this translation is a uh, little, you know, um, unclear, I would say. Tattvic means the essence. What is the essence? Right? For example, I was saying, if you look at the whole existence, this coexistence, harmony, and relationship, that is the essence. That is tattvic. Vaicharic is that on the basis of this essence, if I try to see how it reflects in my living in relationship with others, that is vaicharic. So, if I start with this essence of relationship, harmony, and coexistence, and I accept it in principle, then working out this detail as to how this living with the feeling of relationship, harmony, and coexistence will reflect in my relationship with other human beings. This working out the detail is what is vaicharic, what is thought. And third part is that when I behave with the other, I interact with the other, the world outside, with this relationship, harmony and coexistence. How does it look? So all three aspects, essence of the existence, the reality, which is coexistence, harmony and relationship. Then how it reflects in terms of you know, details of how to live with this feeling relationship, harmony, and coexistence, that is thought. And then how it appears in terms of behavior, in terms of my work, in terms of my expression with the other units in nature. Here, this is called as elemental, thoughtful, and practical. Okay. But I was not very sure about the translation, so I thought that I will use the Hindi word as well. So, tattvic is the tattva, the essence. Thought is vicharic, vichar, the tark. And practical is vyavaharic, you know, how it reflects in my vyavahar, in my behavior, in my work. 
yeah so these are the, some of the points which are important regarding question and answer so if there is any uh, discussion required on this i will respond we are left with another 10 12 minutes but there is some content which uh, jitanji has to cover but anyway if there is anything to be mentioned here i can respond Okay, so we have 10 minutes around left and the 21st slide number this is something which I thought Jitendraji will cover. Is that okay, Jitendraji? Sir, Rajul Bhia is here. Rajul Bhia will okay. do this part. Okay, okay. Ji. Yeah. Not this. Achha. Thick. Ji. Rajul Bhia, namaste. वस्ते जी तो ये वाला स्लाइड तो गणेश को करना है इसका नेक्स्ट वाला हम करेंगे अच्छा ठीक है ना तो अपने को पास 10 मिनट है मैं कर देता हूं हां कर दीजिए गणेश जी 5 7 मिनट ऊपर हो जाएगा तो पूछ लेंगे सबसे जी ठीक सो विद दिस बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द कंटेंट दैट वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग इन ईएचपी 2 राइट सम ऑफ दिस points which are uh, important and which are of different types that we should make clear right so one of the difference which has to be made clear is between value and skill right? the values relate to what to do and skills relate to how to do and they are complementary once I know what to do, that is, once I know the values, then in order to fulfill those values, I learn the skills, how to do. Then we have to differentiate between happiness and excitement. So happiness and excitement are not the same thing, which most of us believe. You know, before you get into the course, you feel that, yes, Happiness comes through excitement. It comes through excitement. So the difference has to be clear, made clear. And one of the important thing in this difference is that happiness is my basic nature. Excitement is something which I get from outside. Sukhamara sabhav hai. ये जो आवेश है ये बाहर का एक प्रभाव है और कोई भी प्रभाव के चीज की निरंतरता नहीं हो सकती स्वभाव का ही निरंतरता हो सकता है तो जब हम लोग ये कह रहे हैं कि हैप्पीनेस इज टू बी इन हार्मनी दैट मींस इट इज समथिंग व्हिच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ माय इनेट नेचर नॉट समथिंग टू बी अचीव्ड फ्रॉम आउटसाइड but when you talk about getting favorable sensation and getting happiness out of it, this is talking about the input from outside. So you are trying to get some excitement and therefore draw, derive happiness out of it. The crisis with this kind of happiness is that it cannot be permanent. It cannot be continuous. So this has to be made clear. <coughs> Prosperity and possession of wealth. I think when we are talking about prosperity, this point has to be made clear that prosperity is not just having you know, accumulated lot of wealth. There are two parts of it. One is identifying the need. The other is ensuring to have more than what is required. If we have not identified our physical needs, then in regard of how much we have accumulated, prosperity will not be there. So this point has to be clear and has to be made clear to the participant. There is another point about prosperity is that, you know, when you have the feeling of prosperity, you share with others. 
when you don't have that feeling of prosperity, you tend to exploit the other, to accumulate more and more. Natural acceptance and acceptance, likes and dislikes. So this, I think, is discussed in very detail. That natural acceptance is something which does not vary with time, with place, with individual. Right? It is something very universal. Where is our acceptances, our likes and dislikes may vary from individual to individual. And for any individual, it may vary at different time, different situations. So that difference has to be understood. A lot of details are given, which I think should be clear to you when you are sharing with the other participants. This difference between intention and competence, difference between intention and desire, this is detailed out when talking about the trust. Trust on intentions. This understanding of trust on intention is based on understanding the difference between the intention and the competence. Difference between the natural acceptance and the desire. Then difference between the competence and the skill. This is uh, important. When we say competence, Right. The competence includes all three things. My understanding, my feeling of relationship, and my skill to fulfill that relationship, whether with human being or with rest of nature. On the other hand, when you say skill, it focuses largely on how to do things part. So what we need to do is to develop the competence and not only skills. Between knowing and assuming, there is a difference and that we should understand, right? And this has been discussed quite in detail when we talk about, you know, difference between this uh, human being, uh, between the body and the self. And we are talking about these four things, knowing, assuming, recognizing and fulfilling. A lot of details are being given. And with those details, we can draw their attention that we should look into ourselves and see how many things you know we know of, we have the knowing of, and how many things about which we have just assumed certain things without knowing. So that homework has to be given to find out for themselves that how many things they really have the knowing and how many things we have just assumed about them without knowing. In fact, the education that we are giving today, most of it is has to do with assuming and not with knowing. Because unless you go through the process of self-exploration and see things directly, right, things as they are, the knowing does not take place. In fact, Majority of what we do in the name of science today is recognizing and fulfilling. Not even assuming is brought to the notice. Right. Very, there is a lot of assuming there at the back of this knowing, uh, recognizing and fulfilling. And we are hardly talking about knowing. Right. Then self and body, yes, I don't have to much say on this because the whole ESP2 course is focused around this. And at least if you remember, we have a detailed discussion on, you know, the need of the self and how the need of the self is fulfilled versus the, that of the body. And then the activity of the self and the body and the response of the self and the body. So all those points must be clear to me in my own experience. And then I should be able to draw that attention of the other, of the participant. This difference between trust and dependability is something which we have to be clear about it ourselves. 
because most of us have this notion that this feeling of trust means the other person should be dependable. What we are saying is not that. We are saying is the potentially, right? Everybody is to be trusted. In terms of potential, he is same as me. I am same as the other. But in terms of realization of the potential, in terms of their competence, right, there may be a lot of difference. Now this depends whether he will be able to fulfill that trust or not will depend upon his competence. So that dependability is related to the intention as well as the competence. This feeling of trust in me, this is dependent on my clarity about the trust of intention, my clarity about the intention of the person, which is always right. So I can have feeling of trust for everyone, but whether he is dependable or not, I will evaluate my competence and I will evaluate his competence in the process of deciding it. Respect and getting the attention of others. This I think is very clear to all of you and we have, we have extensively discussed on this respect. Respect has to do with right evaluation. It is not getting attention from the other. Right? It is rather giving attention to the other. Evaluating oneself, evaluating the other and then Evaluating myself and the other, both. So I look at the other in terms of his potential as well as in terms of his competence. So that is the right evaluation. That is the respect. What we have done in the name of respect is we have replaced it with getting attention from the other. So most of our effort in terms of buying big cars and fashionable clothes and making big house, all these are with the notion of respect as getting attention of the other. Respect and reverence. This is again other side of it. Respect and reverence are equated generally, you know. And that is why when you say respect everyone, there are a lot of questions asking, you know, how can I respect somebody who is a crook? Right? Now, this is confusing this too, respect and reverence. We are not saying that you have to have reverence for, reverence for everyone. The reverence is born out of that quality in the other, which he may or may not have. So that is a matter of competence. But as far as potential is concerned, the potential is same in all of us. That respect is evaluating both. Is respect means right evaluation. And which is evaluating both the competence as the intention as well as the competence the potential as well as the realization of that potential. So in that sense, I can respect everyone, but I will reward someone who has already realized his potential and not otherwise. Similarly, this motivation and over-evaluation is one of the mistakes which most of the parents and the teachers make. They think that in order to motivate somebody, I have to over-evaluate him. which is not true. I must make the right evaluation. Right? And when I'm making the right evaluation, I will say something about his potential, something about his competence, and something about the competence that he has to develop for which he already has the potential. 
So if I do all these three, it will provide enough motivation. I don't have to over-evaluate him. So three things. I have to first tell him about his potential, which is there, same in all of us. Then about his competence, which he has developed. And then about the competence, which he has to develop. So if I can place these three things properly, this will provide enough motivation for the other. We don't have to do the over-evaluation. In fact, this over-evaluation can be very misleading. It can create trouble for him. Then this difference between excellence and competition. A lot of discussion on this. The important point is that when you are talking about excellence, you are talking about realization of the potential which every human being has. So the excellence is something which has to be achieved by everyone and which can be achieved by everyone. <laughs> While competition is not really excellence, it is trying to be special, trying to win over someone. Right? So this competition is one against the other. So not everybody will come, you know, up in that competition. So one will come up, the other will be left behind. In excellence, that is not the condition. In excellence, you can achieve excellence. And when you achieve excellence, you work for excellence of others. <laughs> Not only you are not in competition with the other, you are mutually fulfilling for the other. And this last point, love and infatuation, I think this must have been discussed, you know, in detail. But the basic difference between this, I can just mention. When we are saying love, we are saying that it is a feeling of being related to the other or feeling of relationship with everyone. One, many, and everyone. This feeling of relationship with one is what we are calling it affection. And when it expands to all, we are calling it feeling of love. And if you look at this feeling of love or feeling of relationship, it is basically a feeling of relationship of oneself with the other self. So this is self-centric. Right? Centered around the self of the human being. One human being, other human being. But when you talk about infatuation, this has to do with feeling of relationship on the basis of the body. Or some aspect of the body. And because that particular aspect of the body or body in general does not have that continuity, that stability, right? Then it starts creating problem over a period of time. It may start creating problem immediately or it can start problem, you know, creating problem over a period of time. Some particular aspect of the body or some particular aspect of the, you know, uh, some attitude of the other person. Right? If I have developed liking for the other, then if that overtakes something else or something else overtakes this and there is a difference there, then we are in trouble. then we are in trouble because we are not addressing to the fundamental potential of human being, which is same in all of us. We are not addressing to the self and particularly that natural acceptance part of the self. And therefore, there is no guarantee of the continuity of the permanence. So if I am relating myself to the other on the basis of something other than that, you know, basic potential, 
the basic natural acceptance which is same in all of us, we are likely to get into trouble. So what we call as infatuation today is mostly has to do with the body part, you know, body aspect of it. And we feel attracted to some aspect of the body. Right? And we think that we are related. But then it does not last long. And we are in trouble soon. I think I have very briefly mentioned, you know, these points, but we can get into, you know, enough detail of each one of them. Already there is enough discussion on each of these, you know, uh, points, you know, of difference. Yes. If there is any question to this, I will respond. Uh, Namaste, namaste. Baya, I still have little confusion on this dependability. Trust is like understanding the other person is having potential. But this dependency, I was not little clear. Baya. Yeah, for example, I have trust on you. Okay, Baya. That you want to understand what is truth. Hmm. Right? And you can understand what is truth. Hmm. This is my feeling of trust on you. Mm -hmm. Dependability will mean that I am sure that you have understood the truth, right? Mm -hmm. And you can explain the truth to other. Okay. This is dependability. So you want to understand the truth and you can understand the truth, but whether you have already understood the truth or not, my dependability on you to explain the truth will this, you know, depend on this, whether you have already understood or not. So whether you have the competence or you do not have the competence. Okay. So while I have the trust on you, mm -hmm. right, I cannot depend on you to explain the truth to others. For that, I have to make an evaluation. Okay. See whether you have already understood or not understood. And this not being dependable is not a, you know, kind of complaint. I will make this evaluation and by taking this evaluation that you do not have the competence, I will have the responsibility to help you to develop that competence. So this is not a complaint. <laughs> this is the right evaluation of the situation okay, with the then. commitment to fulfill, you know, whatever is lacking. Commitment to develop that competence in you. And that is what we are doing through this session. Okay, then. Now that you are trying to, you're going to share this reality with others, we are trying to help you to draw your attention towards those points which are important to check for yourself first and then check when you are sharing with others. So we are trying to make you dependable. We have trust on you and we are trying to make you dependable. Is it clear? Yes, Paya. Yes, Paya. Thank you, Paya. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. So now I can hand over to Rajulji. Next slide. Hey, Ganeshi, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, thank one you thing much. that uh, the groups can do, the mentoring groups, is to take each of these points and maybe uh, all the participants in their group can share about their understanding about uh, each of these points. So maybe we take one point and let's take trust and dependability. Yes. And one uh, weekly meeting can be devoted to all the participants of that group sharing their views about trust 
and their views about dependability. Yes. And then there can be some discussion about it. And then the mentor can also place his or her uh, view on it. Because the mentor is also a co-explorer. Yes. So they can also place their view on it, what they have seen or what they think it is. And then there can be a you know discussion and some conclusion out of it. So like that we can develop ourselves further. Okay, now it is 10 past 4. I'll just take a few minutes uh, and uh, go over the, these points because we won't have uh, another session uh, in the near future. Um, uh, these points, uh, I will just quickly go through that. During the breaks that we have, it's a good idea for the RP team uh, to interact with the participants, with each other and with the participants. <clears throat> that would help in further assuring the participants, particularly those participants who are very promising and those participants who are not able to pay so much attention. So these breaks can be used uh, uh, for that purpose. So that is one. And after, after the session, connecting with the local team, with the, uh, uh, there can be meetings with the local team and meetings with the authorities, the higher ups in the institution. Uh, and the agenda of those meetings are not do this and don't do that, but just to listen to each other listen to them, listen to their plans, and then tell them what uh, uh, the intent is. And then if they have questions, then we can answer those kind of questions. So those uh, uh, simple meetings can be held uh, after the session is over for that day. So we can uh, you know, stop here for that. And the next slide, uh, Jitu. The observer has an important role to play, and the observer's role is the next slide. Next, next slide. Okay, so the observer has a very important role to play uh, <clears throat> in this, and uh, one of their roles is to uh, help the group to maintain some order so that there can be an environment for listening to the content and self-exploration can start with that listening. So for ensuring that kind of environment, a lot of uh, do's and don'ts are put over here uh, and, and they can be shared as do's and don'ts or they can be shared as those things that we are agreeing to as a group so that we can develop ourselves. So if they are put as do's and don'ts, then hardly anybody will accept them. But if they are placed by the observer as necessary for, essential for uh, helping each other to develop themselves, then it would be uh, uh, more acceptable to most people. So that is a uh, uh, point about this slide. And if you go to the next slide, the, <clears throat> the important thing for a participant is not only to hear what is being said, but to listen to what is being said. Listening means to be able to uh, grasp the meaning of what is being said. And from the meaning, they can reach the reality if they explore within themselves. So if we are able to ensure that environment where these things can take place, uh, the observer's role is fulfilled. It's a very difficult thing because you can't make anybody listen. You can't make anybody explore. 
but all we can do is to generate a peaceful environment where uh, these activities can actually take place. So the more discussion that we can have, the more reasoning we can place, uh, that would be quite nice. And if it can be placed in a, a, a humorous manner, it is nice. Like, for example, in one of the workshops, uh, the observer said that uh, sometimes, you know, the phone is, cell phone is distracting us and we have paid so much attention to the phone that if the baby cries and the cell phone rings, uh, some of us tend to pick up the cell phone first before picking up the baby. So something like that, you know. So if they are able to communicate it in a manner which uh, is quite acceptable to the participants, uh, it would be nice. And, uh, you know, making it a little uh, uh, strict kind of thing with without placing the reasoning that might uh, be a source of uh, problems for um, the participants accepting also and also for us to you know you know take their uh, make that environment uh, so nice that people will be able to uh, listen and explore so listening seeking clarification asking questions discussing all these are good things we are encouraged we should encourage them to happen so that this exploring within can take place. Whether it takes place in the class or whether it takes place through the assignments or through the discussion in small groups, that is uh, up to the creativity of the resource team. So that's the point of this slide to help the participants to ultimately explore within. But to start with, to be able to listen to the proposals uh, that are being placed. Okay, so that's from my side. It's now 17 minutes past four. If there are any immediate questions, I will take about this. Otherwise, we will close for uh, this particular session. Yeah, it's very gratifying that 49 of us are uh, still here uh, and you joined. 49 of us have joined. Uh, that is very heartening. So with that, we can uh, uh, look forward to a beautiful, you know, 10 UHV2 FTPs so that the community of all the people who are familiar, who are able to see that human education is uh, necessary and possible and that we can do it they have some clarity about where to do the next what is the next step so all that can be very easily achieved now i have so much of confidence that we can do it so with that i like to all wish you all the very best best wishes yes thank you everybody thank you very much it was nice sharing all these points with all of you. Thank you very much. You can need to close the section. ठीक नमस्ते 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 सभी को नमस्ते सभी को नमस्ते सभी को नमस्ते सभी को